Hello, this video is about changing the order of integration, and my name is Kyral Van B. Verano. For this lecture, we have three goals. First, we want to establish an iterated integral using different orders of integration. And then we also learn to illustrate a region or a solid from an iterated integral. And then we select a suitable order of integration to compute an iterated integral. But you have to take note that all of our discussions here are limited to double and triple integrals in Cartesian coordinates. Let us have a quick review on solving iterated integrals of different orders of integration. This example here is an, a double integral with order dy dx, meaning you have to solve first with respect to y then with respect to x. As you are first solving with respect to y, this term here will be deemed constant, so it remains the same. Then you have e raised to x squared times y evaluated from 0 to 2x. And now you have the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x e raised to x squared dx, which is evaluated to be e raised to x squared, where x is from a, x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2. If you evaluate that, you'll have e raised to 4 minus e raised to 0 or e raised to 4 minus 1. This next example is also a double integral but with order dx dy. You have to solve first with respect to x then with respect to y. This is very similar with the previous example so we'll just run through the process. There, we were able to solve two double integrals with different orders of integration. The first one is of order dy dx, and the second one is of order dx dy. But I have another question for you. Why is it important or necessary to change the order of integration? To better understand the answer to this question, let us look at two pairs of double integrals which are actually equivalent and then we need to decide which one is easier to solve this is the first pair which one would you choose to solve yes you will choose to solve the second one because you have already seen how it is solved yes it is easier to solve but why let us look at the first double integral we need first to solve the integral of e raised to x squared dx. Can you think of a technique to solve this? None so far, right? Because actually, this has no closed form. And usually, to solve this, they use approximation techniques. Okay, I'll give you another set. Which of these? Is easier to solve okay mom I'll choose this I've already seen this yes you're correct this is the easier option but why why is that an easier option if you try to solve for the second integral you will actually have to use the integration by parts twice that makes the first double integral easier to solve. So if you are given this kind of problem, which, which way would you choose? Do you want to use IBP twice 
or do you want to change the order and have an easy solution? I would choose the second one. I would choose to change the order of integration. Given a double integral of order dy dx, if we want to change the order of integration to dx dy, we need to reconstruct the bounds of the integral based on the region of integration. Let's take a look at an example. We have seen this before, and we said that the integral of e raised to x squared dx has no closed form. So it is better to change the order of integration and try to solve it. We read this as the double integral of e raised to x squared dx, where the values of x ranges from y over 2 to x is equal to 2, and y ranges from 0 to 4, meaning the region of this double integral is actually the collection of points x, y, which satisfies these conditions. Now, we construct the region of integration. First, we draw the line x is equal to y over 2, or y is equal to 2x, and the line x is equal to 2. Then, we consider a horizontal strips to indicate that the y values would only range from 0 to 4 to have this region of integration. From this region, we reconstruct the bounds of the double integral such that dy comes first before dx. Let's have the bounds for y. If you look at the graph at the right, instead of horizontal strip, we have a vertical strip. The bounds would be the curve enclosing the, horiz uh, the vertical strip, which is 2x, y is equal to 2x, and y is equal to 0. So we have those bounds for y, and the values for x would go from 0 to 2. Now we have the double integral with a changed order of integration. Let's take a look at another example. If we want to change the order of integration of uh, the double integral of f of x, y, dy dx, where y goes to x squared to 2x and x goes from 0 to 2, we do the, same, the similar solution from the previous example. We first derive the region of integration. So y here goes from x squared to 2x, and x goes from 0 to 2. So we first draw the curve y is equal to x squared and y is equal to 2x. And then we draw a, a vertical strip. And since the values of x goes from 0 to 2 only, we will only consider the region in the blue shade. From this region, we reconstruct the order of the double integral. Now, instead of using a vertical strip, we use a horizontal strip for the order dx dy so that the bounds for x would be the curves that encloses the horizontal strip and the bounds for y would be the range from which the strip slides through to cover the area or the region. For the bounds of x, we have the, the curves y is equal to 2x and y is equal to x squared, but we have to rewrite this as x is equal to y over 2 and x is equal to square root of y. The leftmost curve would be the lower bound, which is y over 2, and the rightmost curve will be the upper bound, which is x is equal to the square root of y. And your bounds for y would be from 0 to 4, as we can see from the figure on the right. Now, this is the double integral with a changed order of integration. For more exercises, you can try these examples. Let's move on to changing the order of integration 
in triple integrals. To do this, we need to reconstruct the bounds of the integral based on the solid of integration. As a way of review, let's take a look at two orders in triple integrals and their solid of integration. We recall that the innermost bounds would be illustrated to a space between surfaces. To have a finite space, we need a region which will be illustrated by the two outermost bounds. We have the middle to be between curves and the outermost bounds to be between numbers. So for the first one, the region considered is on the xy plane and the second one we have the region on the yz plane the regions would be based from the two outermost variables now we can see here that to change the order of integration we need two things the solid itself and the region on the plane identified by the two outermost variables. Example, in this second triple integral, you need the region on the yz plane. For example, we need to change the order of integration from dz dy dx to dx dz dy. From the given triple integral, we'll list the bounds for z, y, and x. Z goes from x squared to 4, y goes from 0 to 2, and x goes from 0 to 2 also. From the two outermost bounds, we construct a region in the xy plane, which is shown in the slide. Aside from this region, we have the bounds for z, which gives you a space between two curves or two surfaces. Z is equal to x squared, as you can recall, is a cylinder, and Z is equal to 4 is a plane. Now the solid of integration would look like this. We have the space between Z is equal to x squared and the plane Z is equal to 4, but bounded by the region illustrated on the left graph. From this solid, we reconstruct the bounds to have the order dx, dz, dy. Since the last two variables are z and y, we need a region in, on the yz plane. Looking at the graph of the solid, we have the following region on the yz plane, a rectangular region from y is equal to 0 to 2 and z is equal to 0 to 4. For the bounds of x, we need the two surfaces that will enclose the solid in terms of x. The lower bound would be the plane x is equal to 0 and the upper bound would be the cylinder x is equal to square root of z. Now we have the bounds for x from 0 to square root of z, the bounds for z from 0 to 4, and the bounds for y from 0 to 2. From this bounds, we have the triple integral of order dx, dz, dy. Let us look at this last example where we need to change the order of integration from dz, dy, dx to dx, dy, dz. Similar to the previous examples, from the triple integral, we list the bounds for z, y, and x. Since the last two variables are y and x, we infer from the bounds of y and x a region on the xy plane, which is actually a circular region as shown in the graph. From the bounds of z, we consider a space between two surfaces. Between the surface z is equal to x squared plus y squared, which is actually a paraboloid, and the surface z is equal to 4, which is actually a plane. So from these two surfaces and the region, we have the solid of integration as shown in the rightmost part of the slide. 
From this solid of integration, we reconstruct the bounds for x, y, and z to have the order dx, dy, dz. Since the outermost variables are y and z, we need to determine the region on the y, z plane, which is actually this region enclosed by the parabola z is equal to y squared and the line z is equal to 4. Now for the bounds of x, the lower bound will be the leftmost part of the surface or the negative values in the surface and the upper bound would be the rightmost part of the surface or the positive values in the surface. So the bounds for x would be from negative square root of z minus y squared to x is equal to square root of z minus y squared. For the bounds of y and z, we infer from the region. The, the lower bound of y would be this curve and the out, upper bound would be this curve. So the lower bound would be y is equal to the negative square root of z and the upper bound would be y is equal to the positive square root of z. The bounds of z is clearly from z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 4. From this new bounds for x, y, z, we have here the new triple integral with the order dx, dy, dz. That's it for today. We have this summary of what so far we have done to change the order of integration in double and triple integrals. Thank you for listening. If you want to learn more about topics on Math 28, check out these videos. And don't forget to answer the exercises found in the description below. Have a good day. Bye!